Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, we're going to get right into politics. In fact, you're going to enjoy this particular show because we're going to talk about issues and, and, and certain areas that... Um, well, a little confusing, and you know, we're going to bring it out to light. And uh, things like, for instance, what is the Tea Party? What do you think about the Tea Party? You know, what was its origin? Uh, how was it? How was it established? Uh, uh, its impact on the political process? Uh, where it is today, and where is it going today? Uh, so we're going to talk about that. And uh, then the other thing is that we're going to kind of talk about some of the more current events. Uh, that's plaguing us right now in the political realm, for that matter. In Washington D.C., we're talking about the the, the whole issue of uh, the media deal aspect of it. We, we're talking we're talking about a number of other things. But anyway, there's some other things on my mind. But uh, what I, I don't want to divulge all the goodies that I'm going to be asking this guest of mine. You've seen him before. I'm talking about the chairman of the Republican Multnomah County Republican Party, Jeff Reynolds. And Jeff has a varied background. We're going to get in the he'll give you he'll give you a little insight in terms of where he's come from because we, we want to know this we're going to really spend some time with Jeff because he's a valued person he's been around the state he's been very very active not only in politics but across the board and I think that, I think you'll you'll like it you'll like it okay with that Jeff Hi. Well, welcome aboard, buddy. How's Thanks, it going? Bruce. Good to be here again. Okay, well, well first off, well, the wife said it was okay. You, yep, yep. I got permission. Fine. I got a hall pass, so mm -hmm. I'm out here that now. And, uh, okay. I'm heading after after I get done here, I'm heading over to the Multnomah County Fair to uh, man the booth over there and uh, you know get some more people Good. Uh, Good. signed up and registered to vote uh, Republican. Good. And you know, as you know, this Memorial Day is tomorrow. That's and right. And we're right in the midst of this, and we'd, yeah. like to, we'd like to make sure we recognize all the troops out there, both past and present and those who are still out there beating the beat, if you will, yeah. we want to make sure that we recognize all these folks. And, and if you've got loved ones that have passed away in the, uh, in, from a military standpoint, hopefully you've, you've visited the, the various cemeteries and acknowledge who they are and whatever. It's very, very important. Uh, I would say one thing, that uh, we don't have a draft today. It's unfortunate <laughs> we don't have a draft today. But, but the bottom line is that um, uh, we did have a draft mm -hmm. and, and people did serve. Absolutely. And it's very it's very important that we respectfully acknowledge who they are, like I said, whether they whether they're gone or whether they're here now, and uh, so again, uh, we'd just like to make sure that we we want to make sure that we t we say thanks for serving. Okay. And Bruce, if I, if I could cut in on sure, that on. that particular subject, I, I want to uh, make a special mention. Uh, I was I just had the opportunity on Thursday night to take my uh, seven year old son, who's a, a first year uh, Cub Scout. Okay. And we went with the uh, the entire Boy Scout uh, Council to Willamette National Cemetery. Uh, had several hundred Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts out there, and we were able to. Uh, it was a ceremony to plant flags at every right, gravesite. Exactly. There's over 150 thousand gravesites at Willamette National Cemetery. And we covered the place in less than an hour. Wow! It was it was amazing. It was it was such a great opportunity to teach my son the importance of being thankful for the sacrifices made, so that we could have the freedoms that we have today. It was it was such a, a great opportunity. And we were pre we really we really want to recognize the scouts mm -hmm. and those young folks that did that. You know, in yep. fact, my son, one of my sons, is, is there. Yeah, in yeah. Willamette, you know, so I want to make sure that we we make sure we acknowledge the fact that this is a service that they've done. Yeah. You know, and even though you might have heard the. The latest on the scouts thing, but we will we won't get into that this morning. Right, nice. Okay, yeah. that's another show. Yeah, that's another show. <laughs> but why don't we spend the, the the first half hour talking to, uh, in fact, uh, get, give the the viewing audience an opportunity to get a better feel of what is the Tea Party, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about its origin, mm -hmm. how it came about, and uh, its branding, and uh, mm -hmm. and just 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 let this help out so sure. so let's start off first off let's start off by basically uh, identifying yourself in terms of some of the things that you've been you're chairman of the uh, Multnomah County Republican Party right 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 okay and how did you get involved in all this well and, and I got involved because of the Tea Party I was never involved in politics really? before the Tea Party that's right yeah and it's it's a there there are a lot of misconceptions so uh, I'll give a little bit of background sure. to make sure that we all understand sure. what we're really talking right. about here 
is I got involved in the Tea Party in uh, April of 2009, uh, the second really big one that, that hit like a, you know, a freight train. We had 7,000 people down, downtown in uh, Pioneer Courthouse Square. I wasn't able to make the first rally, but mm -hmm. in February. And what was the platform? What was the issue at that point? Well, the issue was really the excess spending and the stimulus package and okay. TARP and the omnibus spending bill that was passed. It was $400 billion. Everybody forgets what was TARP? What's TARP? I mean, we TARP was the uh, TARP was actually the uh, program under President Bush, the Troubled Asset Relief Program, where they were going to buy up all the toxic assets, the the subprime mortgages that were causing the okay. the uh, economic meltdown. Right. They were going to buy up those assets and help the banks get them off their books so that they could uh, be more healthy and and move forward and survive. The downturn that was caused by the bursting of the of the um, real estate bubble. Mm -hmm. The problem being, of course, that as, as soon as the ink was dry on the on the act itself, and President Bush had signed it, they turned around and said, "Oh well, never mind. We're not going to do the, do it that way. We're not going to buy these assets. We're going to just recapitalize the banks and and you know give all the mm -hmm. money directly to the banks mm -hmm. instead of buying up these assets." So so it was a complete it, it, in implementation. It was awful. And in retrospect, you know, I. I not being all that involved at the beginning of things, mm -hmm. I, I, I thought at the time that it might be a good idea and it might help. Now, looking back, I realize it was a complete disaster, and it, it never could have been uh, a, uh, a positive thing. What really should have happened was that we should have allowed the banks to fail, and whoever was, mm -hmm. uh, uh, whoever was strongest would have survived and, and cleaned up the assets, and, and, and it would have like been we stronger. Always, like we've always, like, like we always do, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Calvin Coolidge is the perfect example mm -hmm. of that. In, in 1920, 21, there was a... Uh, uh, a recession that hit because of overspending by the federal government under the previous administration. Mm -hmm. I think it was actually it, it was Woodrow Wilson in World War One, mm -hmm. and he decided that he was going to do absolutely nothing with federal government uh, to try to uh, end the recession, and it was over in six months. But you look at, I mean, we're still in recession yeah, now. Yes, we are. Uh, yeah, we so, are. Yeah. Uh, so you can you contrast the two things, and it's obvious, and it's always been this way that excess governmental involvement in the economy causes more problems than it solves by a long shot so that's that was that was the origin of the tea party was was tarp and the and the um, stimulus plan the 862 billion dollars of random spending that the government was going to do to try to pull the economy out of the ditch and and we we heard about that and we all were like we can't we can't we can't deal with it. And that it, was the it, Obama it, administration. We're talking that, about that, that was as soon as Obama came in uh, right. in after January, uh, January of two thousand nine. Right. That's when he announced that he was gonna. That was the first thing he was gonna do, and we realized this is gonna be a bad idea and all of that. And so, and and there were some roots of the Tea Party beforehand in the Libertarian Party. Okay. Um, prior to two thousand uh, two thousand nine two thousand. They are a listed party, right? The yes. Yes. Okay. Um, but this was this was nothing. Uh, uh, this was not at all a Republican Party project. This was a nonpartisan. We had Democrats, we had Republicans, we had Libertarians, we had uh, Pacific Green. I mean, we had we had uh, across the spectrum. Obviously, it was mostly conservative and it was mostly fiscally conservative mm -hmm. people that were involved. But there was there was a wide spectrum of people that came together and said. Okay, this this excess, this growth of the federal government is going to be the the ruin of us, and the the invasion of the federal government into our personal liberties is going to be the ruin of us. And it was anti, it was, it was counter to the intentions of the Constitution, which is a restraint on government. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that was that was the whole mix of people that came together in the Tea Party: black, white, Hispanic, Asian, everybody, men, women, it, 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 religious, non-religious, everybody. Everybody came together and said this we we cannot let this stand we have to have our voices heard mm -hmm. so that was the start of the tea party in 2009 with the rallies and the the protests against the mm -hmm. excess federal government and spending and and growth of government all of that stuff pretty soon after that started and and we continued with the rallies for a couple of years but pretty soon after that we realized that okay the rallies are great and and it really brings people together and gives us something you know gives us that that fellowship and that that common goal of having a successful uh, event but if we really want to have an effect on government and we really want to uh, get our get our policies put forth we have to a define our policies and b get people involved in p the political process to advance those policies. So we looked around and we said, okay, well, Democrats, 
probably not our cup of tea, no pun intended. Mm. Uh, so let's let's look at the Republican Party and see if we can uh, get more Tea Partiers involved in the Republican Party mm. and try to make it uh, more fiscally responsible than it had been over the past several years. Mm. So that was that was the the beginning of what we were trying to do with the political process. Since then, you know, I'm, I I got elected as chair of the Republican Party in mm. Multnomah County. Mm. Um, I've done a, a whole bunch of other things. I've discovered a, a talent for writing and blogging and using new media. New media is key, by the way, to the uh, Tea Party. Uh, mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, blogging, uh, all of those ways, because we know we've had these experiences. I think we're going to talk about this a little right, bit later. Right, right, we've right. been targeted by uh, government, we've been targeted by the media, and we've been told specifically that we're not going to be covered because we think we're afraid of you and, and we think you're going to have too much of an impact. So we had to find a way to get our voices heard anyway. So we had to circumvent that media uh, establishment. And we've seen over the years that the media has conspired with the Obama administration. Uh, the journalist uh, scandal where uh, the, the talking points were delivered directly from the White House to a list, of, a, a list an email list of uh, the most influential liberal reporters in the nation, you know, uh, the top heads at CBS, NBC, ABC, uh, all of the magazines, Time and Newsweek and all of those, everybody was speaking the same talking points. And some of those talking points were to tear down the Tea Party. You're racist, you're, um, uh, you're un-American, you know, not patriotic, you're hypocrites, whatever. It, it, all of that stuff originated directly from the White House, and we know this now. This is a historical fact. What, what about Lee? Not, 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 we're going to continue on. Sure, sure. But you made mention about the fact that um, many members of the Tea Party were actually going in, in the party, right? In the Republican Party. Some of them were. Some of them, uh, some of them are Democrats. And some, some of them, them are, are uh, libertarians. But the way it's projected out in the media yeah. is as if to say it's only Republicans. It's, it's, a, it's an outgrowth of the Republican You're Party, right, which right. It, it's exactly the, the opposite of that. Mm. The, we, we came in as an outside force trying to have an effect on the Republican Party okay. and make sure that they stuck to their principles and their ideals of smaller government and lower government spending. So that's that, that's that's our, and we're still still fighting that battle uh, with, you know, successes here and failures there, and but you know we're still pushing that ball forward, trying to make sure that the Republican Party and its representatives and its elected officials stick to those ideals uh, that are ensconced in the U.S. Constitution. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, when you when you think about it again, too, I, I know it's for, they pick, picked candidates, right? Mm -hmm. but, but again, too, that many of the candidates had their R's in the front of their name. Sure, sure. Rather than D's or this, that. Well, and, and like I said, because the, the Democrats, we look at the Democrats, and they've been wholly taken over by the far the furthest left influences there are mm -hmm. and it, it's kind of funny that the republicans in congress get blamed for all the partisanship when it was the nancy pelosi congress who gave us things like you have to pass the bill to see what's in it and the stimulus bill and obamacare and all of those things that are a massive increase in the size of government it's the and, and I'm going to get killed for this, but it is the the uh, the statist, Marxist, socialist, communist elements of the professional left that have taken over the Democrat Party. The Democrats like to uh, like to brand themselves as the common sense alternative, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's not the party of, of John Kennedy anymore. John Kennedy lowered taxes and caused an economic boom in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that party anymore. It's not the party of trade unions anymore. It's the, it's the party of public sector unions and the growth of government. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Well, you know, again, it's, it's still a confusing topic. I'm sure you can appreciate sure. it very much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But again, uh, where, where, where do we go from here in reference to the Tea Party? Okay, so the last couple of years, uh, Oregon Tea Party in particular has been working on uh, it not being as public with their their uh, demonstrations and their recruiting efforts. Uh, we we still engage in all of that stuff, but we're we've been a lot more involved in the political process, trying to have an effect on the state party, trying to have an effect on elections, and trying to get more people involved at the at the uh, bottom rung, I guess, of the of the political ladder to get people to matriculate up through the process. So we've been involved in school board elections. We've been involved in trying to get people. Uh, uh, elected to the state house and the state senate and that kind of thing. So, so we've been a lot more um, uh, not as visible, but a lot more impactful. I think over the last couple of years mm -hmm. because we have a plan now. You know, mm -hmm. we 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 want to make uh, Jeff Merkley a target and mm -hmm. take him out. Mm -hmm. We want to uh, make sure that we keep 
the uh, the Republicans who tend to take bad votes, we want to make sure that we keep them accountable and, and say, look, you know, this is not what the party platform reads. This is not why we elected you and sent you to Salem or D.C. We want to make sure that you, you stay true to the principles of the party uh, because that's, that's why we elected you in the first place. Um, and and then you know of course we want to make people like uh, Suzanne Bonamici and and uh, uh, Kurt Schrader and Jeff Merkley we want to make them targets and try to uh, get somebody more conservative elected. Okay. So uh, we want to dial back the size of government. Okay. The government was already too big when Obama took over, and then it went from it went from this to this, right. and and we need to stop that. We need to rein it back in. Uh, frankly, I don't see why we need to have federal spending any more than what it was in the 2006 levels, and and now it's it's uh, it, it's grown exponentially. So uh, we need to rein all of that back in and get people off of the public dole, get people more self-reliant and re less reliant on the government with all the strings that come attached with all of those handouts. And are there any specific leadership situations that we can talk to as far as the, as far as the, as far as the Tea Party is concerned? Is there leadership? I mean, you know, is, is, sure, sure. You know, we we've got a lot of we got a lot of partners and we got a lot of groups all across the state. Oregon Tea Party uh, in 2010 or 2011, I can't remember when it was. I think it was the beginning of 2011. Started their own pack. And that's headed up by John Kuzminich, who ran for Congress in 2010. Um, he's uh, he's a very dedicated patriot and uh, has has had a lot of effect on on reshaping and and trying to change the direction of the Tea Party so that we have more of a direct effect on the political process. We're also trying to do more educational things too and and remind people why we're a constitutional republic. We're not a democracy, and and a lot of people don't realize that we are a constitutional republic, and there's a reason for that. Uh, it's, it's to make the gears of government grind more slowly so that the government policy can't shift with the winds of public polls and, and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's, it's a more stable process. It's a, much, it's a very disti important distinction and it's, it's getting less and less well known as time goes on and our public education system fails and, and all of that. So. Okay, from the lay, lay person out there, do, do, will, will, will we be seeing in the, in the very near future maybe a slate of candidates, uh, people running for office from the Tea Party? In fact, those plans are already in place. Uh, we've been we've had meetings, we've had conference calls, we've had we've been talking to people all across the state, uh, leaders of different groups, the Eastern Oregon Patriots and the 912 Project, uh, different groups, Freedom Works, Americans for Prosperity. We've been talking to everybody, trying to come together on a uh, on an agenda for 2014. Mm -hmm. So that we can, like you say, run a slate of candidates that will uh, that will take out the the worst actors. And you know, this is Oregon. This is Blue Oregon. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are we have some of the. Uh, I think Merkley is one of the top five most liberal senators in the Senate. Mm -hmm. He's not very well liked in in the state of Oregon. So we th we th think we have a real chance of getting a true conservative elected to that Senate seat. Of course, the governor's seat's also up. I'm not sure yet on candidates there uh, who's willing to step up. So um, there's, a, there's a lot of things in play right now. We're looking at the state level. We're looking at the federal level and the, looking at all of it, trying to uh, have a, as much of an effect as possible and change the debate. Even if we run a candidate who loses, the, and this is this is something that I've been, I've been working on for several months now. It's... Everybody, everybody on the right, every Republican knows what the William F. Buckley rule is. Mm -hmm. now, William F. Buckley was the founder of mm -hmm. National Review magazine, right. and uh, he was uh, he stated that uh, we should back the most viable, uh, the rightward most viable candidate. And a lot of people on the right have have misinterpreted that to make it the most viable candidate, the most electable candidate on the right. What it really means is we should have a viable candidate who can articulately and eloquently state the conservative principles that we're fighting for mm -hmm. and change the debate during the electoral process. Whether or not that candidate actually wins, what's important is that we change the, the conversation mm -hmm. and we get people really thinking about what's important in these in these races. So that's that's what we're trying to do <laughs> overall. Trying to do yeah. Jeff, Jeff well, you know, like I said, you've been around this business for quite some time. A few years. And uh, you're right. <laughs> And um, you, you start thinking about th there's a state of confusion right now mm -hmm. among us all. 
Can you talk a little bit about that? Do you think some rationale as to why are we in such a fix? You know, and that's interesting because uh, from the Tea Party, I'm I'm acutely aware of the fact that we've been smeared by the the press and the the left and the Democrats and all of that. We've been we've been maligned for things that we haven't done. We've been maligned as being things that we are not, Mm -hmm. such as racist or Mm -hmm. homophobic Mm -hmm. or you know xenophobic in, in the case of. Immigration, all of that stuff, all of that stuff goes out the window. Uh, it, but it's it's very important to to realize who we are and how we effectively communicate with with the public. Okay. And it all goes back to sticking to our principles of free markets, limited government, and the Constitution. Those are those are the three things that the Tea Party fights for. That's pretty. That's a pretty powerful uh, mm-hmm. uh, platform from which to fight. That's a fundamental. Uh, what we always go back to that's 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 our foundation so when we are taking fire from all sides when establishment republicans are attacking the tea party because uh they're messing up uh their process and, and when we're taking fire from the democrats because of you know we they see us as such a threat and we, we, we're taking fire from the media because they're lazy and they don't want to report the facts we always go back to our foundations and our fundamentals and and we have the truth on our side and that's how we are best able to be most effective and talk to the voters and say this is what we believe in and there was just a a poll just released uh, a couple of days ago that that showed that forty four percent of americans still support the tea party Mm. and only twenty nine percent are opposed Mm. So Indeed. we're still popular. The people still believe what we believe. It's the foundation. It, it's it's what's in America's DNA yeah, right, is what right, we back. Right, right. right. Okay. That, now let's go. In, let's go into some of the things that are the more current events here, since we have some time. At this okay. Point in, time. Right. in fact, I should I should have gone back to Multnomah County Republicans, and um, you are the chair. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what? The, so the up, upcoming elections, friends. Well, before we get into that. Uh, I'm, I think the viewing artists want to thank you and, and your and, and your party, i.e. Multnomah County Republican, for supporting the election of Steve Buell. Absolutely. I mean, still had the background as far as I'm concerned. He's mm-hmm. going to make an excellent person on that board. Yep. Yep. And maybe shake it up a bit, whatever. Yeah. Because there are some key issues that are that, are fa- that we're faced here within the city of Portland, mm-hmm. as far as the school district is concerned. Because you know we don't have Bullhead here at all. Right. Right. And these poor kids, they, they don't have nothing else to do. They right. To do. If you're not going to school, if you're not going to college after you graduate, then right. what are you going to do? And, gonna do? and especially with the graduation rates in Portland public schools, it's no, it's. it's, it's, it's great. I, I, I don't know how we can justify that. Yeah. But I'm sure Steve's going to thank, well, thank you for, for supporting him Absolutely. and getting your membership to support him. Mm-hmm. And, in fact, uh, he's going to be on the show next week. Good, good. And he's going to be, I guess, with a, with a teacher of some sort. And, and we're just going to, you're going to give him the opportunity to articulate it to, not only to the parents, mm-hmm. but also to the administrators and the, and the like. Mm-hmm. Because they can see the show, too, got yep. me? because we do need change. Yeah, okay. and the Multnomah County uh, Republicans really had a good success in the last school board elections okay. ju- we just had on Tuesday. Okay, Joe Tini was reelected in Park Rose. Okay, uh, we got a couple of uh, conservative members in um, Park Rose and Reynolds. Excuse me, Joe Tini is in Reynolds. We got a couple of conservative members in Park Rose and Reynolds. We ran mm-hmm. several candidates who uh, were able to uh, get their feet wet for the first time. They, mm-hmm. they didn't win, but now they're part of the process and they, they know what it takes and mm-hmm. they can either run again or they can contribute to the party in helping other candidates. And, right. and now that they have that, that experience under their belt, so we, we've been really building a base mm-hmm. of uh, people to get into our pipeline, our candidate pipeline, whether that be as candidates themselves or as campaign managers or whatever the case may be so we've 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 been constantly expanding that base and i feel real good about our our results on tuesday as well as the number of people we've gotten new people involved in the process mm-hmm. okay again let's talk a little bit more then about what are some of the issues or concerns you have in the party right now that's on the table for instance you, know, you did the jenny jenny Berwick thing yeah too yeah. long ago <laughs> may want to just share a little bit about sure, what sure. that was and at that time you had quite a bit of media didn't you? I, I did yeah i had a, a, a coordinated national smear campaign yeah, against me with yeah. the new york times and al sharpton uh, coming after me personally for posting a video that i didn't even shoot uh, so. and what was that what was that about for the benefit so, of those viewers out there? right so this was back in march uh jenny Berwick 
Burdick had brought up a whole bunch of anti-gun bills, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, bills that were going to uh, uh, take away our Second Amendment rights to keep and bear arms and defend ourselves the way we see fit. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a town hall scheduled at the beginning of March, and uh, she canceled it at the last minute, citing scheduling conflicts. And we we know that uh, Ginny Burdick has had this problem in the past many times. She ducks her constituents. She doesn't want to tell the truth. She doesn't want to mm -hmm. talk to her her constituents and take the tough questions so she was ducking and avoiding and all of that and, and we knew it and and uh a local citizen journalist uh, on on the monday night she was supposed to have the town hall went to her home and and uh took the cell phone camera and stuck it out her car window and uh and filmed the uh the the street where her house was Hmm. And said, "Okay, well, uh, if Ginny Burdick uh, has a scheduling conflict, you know, why why is she coming home?" So they filmed her, you know, driving into her her garage and taking out her recycling and and uh, going in for the night and didn't didn't invade her privacy. They were across the street and and filming the 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 home and. So it, it proved beyond the shadow of a doubt that, that she was lying and she didn't have a scheduling conflict. She just canceled the town hall to avoid talking to her constituents. So I call. Uh, I saw the video. I, I it was posted on YouTube late that night, and I saw it. And then I I called her office the very next day. And I said, Hey, what was the scheduling conflict you guys had that uh, caused you not to be able to uh, have your town hall? And she uh, and the staffer hemmed and hawed and clearly didn't want to talk to me and mm -hmm. said, Well, you know, there there was another rep that was supposed to be there, and uh, they had a scheduling conflict, so we, they blamed it on the other rep. So I called that rep's office, and and they said, Oh no, we just heard at the last minute that Ginny canceled it. So so it was all it, it was very obvious that uh, she was making up stories and lying to her constituents about why she was canceling the town hall. So I posted the article with the with the video posted. Keeping in mind again that I was not the guy that shot the video and I didn't even post it first. We Somebody else facts. posted it first. Yeah, but I got all the facts and I put out the article. And because I'm the chair of the Multnomah County Republican Party, I got hammered, mm -hmm. hammered. I got reporters calling me from uh, uh, Channel 6. Ken Boddy actually did a really good job. He, he came to my house and interviewed me for the lead story on Channel 6 News on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday night that week to talk about the fact that, you know, this video was, was shot and it was posted up on my website. And, uh, uh, you know, just to give a, a shameless plug here, right, 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 I, right, right, I'm the right, editor right. of watchdogwire.com slash Oregon. Okay, so okay. Um, that's a, that's a, uh, the, uh, a media watchdog site to okay. uncover waste, fraud, and abuse by government. So. Oh. Okay. It's a nonpartisan yeah, uh, sure. website, actually, uh, funded by the Franklin Center. Anyway, so I got all these. I got all these uh, hits in the media. I got the the Oregonian uh, with David Sarasone uh, doing a. Um, uh, an opinion piece uh, calling me out for shooting the video and I had to call him and tell him look uh, I didn't shoot the video you you made this up you need to uh, submit a retraction on this and he did so and and by the time the next week rolled around I had gotten a call from a columnist for the New York Times and uh, she uh, another citizen journalist this was the best part this was the funniest part was another citizen journalist asked uh, called her office and asked for comment and they said that there would be no further comment uh, on the story and the, that very night she appeared by satellite on the Al Sharpton show. <laughs> so and, and of course, wow. you know, her chief of staff is the former director of opposition research for the Democratic Party of Oregon, and he he trained all of their trackers, their political trackers, to walk around with video cameras on yeah. Republicans to uh, catch them in 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 mistakes. Mm -hmm. So so it was all I mean, it was all made up, and it was all lies, and it was all playing the victim card, and we exposed all of it, and and I was the one that that got targeted for that, even though I wasn't the one that shot the video in the first place. Okay. Okay. So, so that, but using, you and I talked about this before the show started, uh, using sort of a, the negativity around that, yeah. that, that situation, yeah. right? Right. I just kept telling the truth. I just kept, you know, I, I didn't shy away from the media and I didn't shy away from the attention, even though it was good. negative. That's good. That's I good. got death threats. My family got death yeah. threats. So, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't anything to sneeze at. But I kept telling the truth, and I kept saying, this is what happened. Ginny Burdick is lying. Ginny Burdick is lying. This is what happened. And, oh, by the way, she's a hypocrite because she has intimidated public employees in the past. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've got all this, all these articles and all this testimony and all this stuff. All I did was kept telling the truth and kept telling the truth. And, and uh, eventually, all of that negative press, 
I, I was able to actually get my point out through the negative columns. You know, um, we consider ourselves, we citizen journalists, consider ourselves the Ben Franklins and the and the Paul Reveres and the the um, the. the um, I'm forgetting the other guy, but uh, we're we're the the poor Richard's almanac of of mm -hmm. modern times. Okay. You know, okay. we're not the state-run media. Doing. You yeah. know, that's a good way of doing it. So, Thomas Paine is the guy I'm trying there, to think there of. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, but but then at the same time, when, when this was going on, it was still sort of like featured as if it was this was a Republican Party piece. Right. And mm -hmm. and that was that was not the intention. You okay. know, had it been a Republican had, who had done it, I would have done the same story. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, the the website that I write for is that one of the websites is, mm -hmm. is a nonpartisan website. Mm -hmm. So it's it's about balance, you know. But but the IRS has been specifically targeting conservative groups ever since Obama took office, and we've known this all along, and we've said it, and we've been laughed out as you know kooks and conspiracy nuts and all of this stuff. But it's it's really true. And it's happened here in in Oregon. We I'm, I've talked to half a dozen Oregon or uh, half a dozen Tea Party leaders in Oregon who mm -hmm. have told me that they gave up on their attempt to form a PAC uh, because th there was too much uh, too much invasive information that they wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, the Oregon Tea Party PAC itself had to change its own structure because of all of the invasive questions that they wanted. Mm -hmm. And it's hampered our uh, our fundraising ability over the last several years because of it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and and you know for the for the people on the left that say well they they've been doing it universally no they haven't the uh, uh, president obama's uh, or there 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 have been several examples i i don't recall the specific examples off the top of my head but there have been several examples of left leaning pacs and 501c3s and c4s who were fast tracked and didn't have this kind of scrutiny and and the uh, the ones that were perceived to oppose obama's agenda were the ones that got the extra scrutiny and it's it's pretty well demonstrated fact so um, and like I said you know here in Oregon we've had that happen to a bunch of different groups and it's really hampered our efforts mm -hmm. so you know another area that uh, talking to this, this particular issue I noticed they brought some some of our some of our own congressional delegations mm -hmm. to the table if you're talking about the idea that they, they too yeah. Well, see, and, and I, I just reported a, an article uh, last week on Senator Merkley. Merkley wrote a couple of letters to the IRS demanding more scrutiny to some of these groups, hmm. right? This was, uh, he wrote one in 2011, and he wrote one in, again in 2012. 2011 was at the height of the what was going on with the IRS targeting conservative groups. 2012 was after it supposedly ended, but nonetheless, uh, it was he he and a bunch of other liberal senators like Chuck Schumer from New York and Udall from New Mexico uh, demanded that the IRS start giving these groups more scrutiny, or they would consider legislation to make them do it. And so it was basically a threat. And I I, uh, I emailed their office asking for comment on that, and they gave me the standard thing about how oh, oh it's abhorrent and and uh, we we disagree with uh, you know Gen Senator Merkley has a statement I, I disagree with what it was and it, uh, they should be prosecuted to the fullest extent and then the very next paragraph of his statement is calling for more scrutiny just like he uh, just announced and so when I asked them about the uh, I asked follow up questions about the letters that he has previously sent demanding more scrutiny from the IRS, uh, they've gone completely silent and ignored my questions. They mm -hmm. have refused to answer any further questions about this. And then, of course, uh, 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 Senator Wyden came in uh, last week because he's in a safe seat. He's not up for re-election for another five years. So he came in and started, uh, he, he picked up the water for Merkley because Merkley's up for re-election next year. So he's trying to divert some of the attention saying, oh, well, they should be targeted if they're, if they're engaging in political activities well you know that's that's not their that's not their job and it's it's a clear uh, it's a clear slippery slope if if the IRS is doing the bidding of their their boss and and make no mistake Obama is their boss yeah uh, it, and it, all the other elected officials well uh, you kind of indirectly you tell me well, no I mean that's yeah, they, the they, Treasury they, Department they, is a cabinet position right, directly right, under right, uh, right, the executive right, branch right, right. so that's that's Obama's baby 
right? So he has control over the IRS. If he's telling them to target specific groups because of their ideology, there was one pro-life group in Iowa that was asked what kind of prayers they say at their at their meetings. Hmm. Really? That's any of the government's business? I don't think so. Have we completely abandoned the First Amendment? Give me a break. Well, you know, the other thing, I'm just, first I'm going to ask this question. What, what do you think about this country from the standpoint that supposedly this government is supposed to be a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Correct. Are we still there? Are we losing it? Oh, it, it, that's been that's been corrupted and bastardized uh, for decades. Um, it's and it, it's it's tough to fight back against that. Think about this: uh, we are individualists so in the Tea Party and in the, the Republican Party. We are people that believe in the individual and the power of the individual and the freedom of the individual. That's what the ex uh, the Constitution exists to protect: is to put a constraint on government and um, uh, protect the individual. Right. But we, we all have to band together as individuals and advance somebody who believes in individual rights and goes to Congress with the express purpose of limiting Congress's power. I mean, there's so many conflicts and so many difficulties but to they overcome. they get in the same pool. They, I mean, <coughs> once they get there, they get their contract, their well, portfolio. Then that, and that's the problem. They get their portfolio, and everybody's being said, okay, that's fine, right. you know, the second here's they, your million bucks. That's that you're right. gonna be, You will be a millionaire within what? Two or three times. That's exactly right. You, uh, that's that's you go to Salem and you go to D.C. and yeah. and immediately they get their hooks in you. The yes. lobbyists and the yeah. the consultants and the people that say, well, you won't win re-election if you don't vote my way. And um, uh, here's fifty thousand dollars to seed your uh, re-election fund and all of that stuff. You think you know? term limits would help a little bit about this? Piece? You know, I, I've been conflicted on term limits for a long time because I, I believe strongly in the constitutional right to vote for whoever you want to. And and uh, if if you're satisfied with that guy. Then, then you know, by all means, he should be reelected. However, we've seen the corrupting influences uh, in D.C. and in Salem, and they are deep and we wide. We break it some way, some way, shape, or form. We I think that's really the only way to break it, frankly. And I think that uh, th there are ways to justify the um, the uh, uh, term limits under the Constitution. So I, I think that really is the only way we can we can break that influence. Okay, let's see if we can take a call. Calling you on the air. Your question or comment, please. Hopefully you're enjoying the show. I, I, I run the risk of, of being a bore, but I, that's okay. The question, the question I was asking is about understanding. Understanding, because what I'm hearing is, if you say the business community versus the 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 Portland community, then it gets back to that corporatist issue again. And we talk about individuals. I think I'm one of the biggest individuals I know. But in terms of of civility and respect. And dignity? What are those things? So I got to ask that question, Mr. Reynolds, again. What about the word understanding and uh, and and not taking it from just from a, a values and principle perspective, and uh, that, that making these living documents and living things that functions for all people? Because mm -hmm. ethnicity is different between people. Yeah. Social classes are different. Okay. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, Carla. Yeah. And, uh, okay. So. Uh, I, I think that the, the Constitution, and we're going to get into this whole other argument about whether it's a living document or not, and, and that's, that's not necessarily where uh, we don't have time for it, but, but I, th I think that my perspective on the Constitution as it's written is to respect all individuals. Mm -hmm. And leaving aside the, the three-fifths of a man issue that I, I understand is still a sticking point, and, and yeah. that's another discussion. Yeah. Yeah. But... The, the intent of the Constitution and, and the, the way it was written was to honor the individual, every individual. Uh, so, yes, I think that to the caller's question, we do always go back to our principles and, and our ideals and our fundamentals because we all, uh, we on the Republican side, are supposed to all believe that every individual has equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. And we, w our job is to foster that opportunity and to maximize that opportunity. The state comes in and guarantees outcomes and and that's how you end up with the hooks in with the, the bigger government and the handouts and the and the you know the welfare and everything else that's that actually dishonors the individual and individual abilities because everybody's going to achieve different things based on their own innate abilities and talents so when you dishonor the the individual when you uh, when you take away their opportunity by capping what they can do based on the safety net becoming a lifestyle that's that's where you really have problems and and end up with the breakdown of 
of the individual, with society, with the family, all of those things that are positive. And that, that we want to restore those positive influences on every community. And that's so to the to the caller's point about we have different ethnicities and different viewpoints and different uh, uh, ways we approach things. That's that's actually w one of the projects we have with the Multnomah County Republican Party is uh, we have that uh, community engagement committee where we mm -hmm. want to go out and talk we to people. Yeah. We, 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 uh, I've realized over the past couple of years that it's an insult to every individual voter to say, the Republican Party believes this and it should align with you, so you should come to us. We can't tell people to come to us. Mm -hmm. We have to go out to them. We have to reach out to them. We have to knock Respond on their door. Their issues. We have to have a conversation, issues. right? Yeah. right? Yeah. And and stop dictating and yeah. listen. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what we're trying to do. So mm -hmm. that's it was. It's like turning a battleship around. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're 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 turning things mm -hmm. to the proper direction. And and it's it's a time consuming process. And it's it is a process. It's not an immediate thing. Mm -hmm. But that's that's what we're trying to do. You know, I, I've been doing some stuff on on this ballot measure eleven, and people are oh, looking yes. at the possibility of mm -hmm. repealing it and whatever and in fact we're going to try we're going to try to get Mannix Mannix is going to be on mm -hmm. here too uh, and um, in the very near future but I, I've got about two minutes but something was said and then uh, we'll, we'll get into it a little bit more but I was talking to a young man who had been involved in a situation like that and um, and all of a sudden I, I said to him well, well, well how do you get out of this? how do you get out of this situation I said, Mr. Bouchard look at let's put it this way many of us are caught in this situation there mm -hmm. are three things that we can't we can never get out of this thing mm -hmm. one child support yeah one unemployment mm -hmm. and being on probation yeah we're dead yeah and everyone else is making money <laughs> but us. Yeah, no, you know I, I, I get it's, that. It's a tough situation. Right. And, and again, I, you know, we've talked about this, and, and you know, and, and we, we, as from the standpoint of saying, we need to kind of address some of these. That's one of the reasons why we're doing this series on, on, on uh, Measure 11 and trying to figure out. And I agree with that. And I, I believe in Measure 11, but I also believe that uh, we need to have solutions-based yes. programs yes. And, yes. and programs to get people out of that lifestyle. Yes. Yes. You know, uh, black, white, Asian, whatever, Hispanic, well, we it doesn't matter. Jobs you know? with those yes. folks in that same thing. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's, it's a, a self perpetuating, yeah, it's, it's, it's another it, institution exactly. that becomes its own exactly. cause exactly. instead of exactly. being about the individuals that exactly. are housed there. Exactly. And so I really appreciate that, you know, we, we've been talking about this, and in fact, you, you were so responsible for getting in that series of Velvet Measure 11, mm -hmm. and I either reaching out. Sure. sure. Because we, those are some of the things we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And you've also said that you, you might you entertain the idea of being here maybe monthly, once I'd, a month. I'd love to. And yeah. then uh, reaching out to the folks and letting them know where we are, answering questions like we've done, and mm -hmm. appreciate some of the callers who have called in. It's really great. They continue to call in, by, by the way. we got about another minute. I think we got about another minute here at this point in time. Yeah, about another minute. Anything else you want to say? Yeah, I, I just want to talk about the uh, Multnomah County Fair again. I go want to on, encourage right. people yeah, to uh, head over because we've got a lot of good things going on. We've got a lot of volunteers okay. that are out at the fair at Oaks Park. It uh, goes through tomorrow at 7 p.m. I'm actually going to be, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to drive over and uh, man the booth for a little bit. And uh, it's a great time. It's an old-fashioned type of fair. It's not, it's not your state fair type of fair, but it's an old-fashioned kind of fair. There's a lot of good stuff going on and uh, good opportunities to stop by our booth and get involved and ask us some questions. Let's have a conversation. I Sounds great, it. Jeff. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. All right, right thanks. Okay, yeah. okay, folks, thanks very much. We'll see you next time. Right? And call us. Thanks very much for giving us a call. Okay? See you next week. Have a good one.